Yo, what is going on everyone? It's your boy, the one and only, coming to you live with a review of a product I am beyond ecstatic about. Let me preface a bit by saying the decision to choose between photography gear and cameras is incredibly hard and lucrative, especially with so many offerings available to us. So many questions to consider. What kind of lens do I need? DSLR or mirrorless? What brand? I was stuck between the Nikon D850 and the Sony a7 III and did extensive research on both but finally took the plunge and opted for Sony's entry level offering but actually isn't so entry level as it has so much to offer for the price. With key features like a newly developed full frame 24.2 megapixel back illuminated sensor with evolved image processing a wide ISO range of 100 to 51,200 and the longest rated battery life of any mirrorless camera at 710 shots per charge, it's no wonder Sony's a7 III is at the top of a lot of people's wish list in terms of amateur to semi-pro cameras. There's so much to cover but in this video, we're going to cover an overall review aimed at beginners trying to highlight all the high points as well as the pros and cons of the camera and also feature my own take on how it is useful to me a YouTuber, and give my honest advice for those wishing to get one of these babies soon or in the near future. I can confidently say this though, I am super glad I made the right choice and I am in love with this camera and can't wait for you guys to notice how great this camera is through the filming of my videos. Anyway, that was a long intro, so sorry, but anyway, let's go ahead and dive in. Alright, now let's take a closer look at the body and the design of the a7 III mirrorless camera. The biggest difference between DSLRs and mirrorless cameras is in the viewfinder. Traditionally, DSLRs are beloved by many for their true-to-life approach. By that, I mean the lens you look through is made possible through a series of mirrors and prisms to reflect light onto your eye, thus casting the most true-to-life image possible of whatever it is that you're capturing. Mirrorless is exactly what it sounds like, no mirrors. Basically, mirrorless cameras have a direct advantage in size and weight because it eliminates the need for those mirrors and prisms but require an electronic viewfinder or an LCD screen to capture your images. That is why a lot of photographers prefer DSLRs because it is like trusting your eyes but unless you're blind, it's like trusting your glasses or contact lenses. The mirrorless Sony a7 III can typically be found retailing for $1,999, definitely not entry level by any stretch of the word, but in the realm of professional cameras, this is an entry level, but man does it deliver. And that's the thing with this camera, entry level doesn't always necessarily mean bad. This camera does so much in such a little package, weighing in at 33.3 ounces or 945 grams, for all it is, it is extremely lightweight, but that's to be expected as mirrorless cameras tend to be lighter than DSLRs. This encompasses only the body though, as attaching certain lenses onto this can increase that weight by a whole pound or more in some cases. The body feels very natural to hold and button placement also feels natural, seeming to fall right into place with the anatomy of the human hand, so taking pictures and videos at times feels so effortless since everything is right where it needs to be. The ergonomics of the camera is a pure delight and it feels so fluid, light and fun to hold and snap photos. You'll have your power button up top, your dial for auto mode or video recording mode just to name a few. The front looks mesmerizing without a lens as looking at the actual image sensor looks very high-end and futuristic. Where most of your adjustments will be found is on the back where you'll notice your touchscreen LCD monitor, menu button to adjust settings, diopter adjustment dial, movie button, rear dial, multi-selector, media slot cover switch, control wheel, and other important buttons that help navigate through menus and to take the best photography possible. Flanking to the right and left, we have certain ports in I.O. like a microphone jack, a headphone jack, an HDMI micro jack, a USB Type-C port, your charging port, and your slot for an SD card to store all of those funny moments and those beautiful memories. On the bottom, we have our little door or window or whatever you want to call it that houses our rechargeable battery as well as a tripod socket hole which is used for yup you guessed it switching lenses 
No, I'm kidding, it's for the tripods, but speaking of the body, one of the most impressive components of this camera to me is the EVF, or the Electronic Viewfinder. This viewfinder projects the image captured by the lens electronically into the lens, which differs from a DSLR, which again uses those mirrors that I mentioned to recreate the image. The Sony a7 III features a high contrast, high resolution, fast start viewfinder with something around a whopping 2.3 million dots used for very true to life image reproduction. You can also adjust certain settings pertaining to the viewfinder in your settings, obviously. This is one gripe I have though, especially being new to photography altogether is the endless spiral of menus. Jesus, there's just so much it's almost intimidating, but I guess once I get more used to the camera, I'll know what everything means. For now, I'm kind of winging my photography and see what works best while experimenting, adjusting dials and such. Now, I know what some will say. Well, just read the manual, you idiot. But then again, who reads the manual? Like, can we be honest here? Anyway, the expansive menu system is nitpicky, I know, but what is another impressive component to the a7 III is the A9-like autofocus. What I've learned in the short time having this camera and shooting is that certain images or more specifically certain moments happen in a flash. So imagine taking an image of something and it is completely out of focus and now that memory is ruined forever, never to be relived again except in your thoughts and mind. I'm glad to say that the a7 III autofocus is like a total champ and have had no problems whatsoever getting a very reliable and very quick autofocus, although a minor complaint is that the autofocus does take some degree of mastery to it. You do have to practice at it as a surprisingly is not as straightforward as one would think. It borrows much from the A9, like the 425 contrast AF points, which no, does not stand for as f points, it stands for autofocus, that work with a 693 point focal plane phase detection autofocus system. Pretty impressive if you ask me. This results in very clear crisp images thanks to that impressive autofocus capability. Remarkably, this system covers about 93% of the frame, which means that even objects that are in motion should be easier to track and catch. Don't get me started on low light performance. Hands down, the low light shooting capabilities of this camera blew me away, both in photography and videography. As compared to the last iteration of the A7 lineup, low light focusing speeds have nearly doubled. Just take a look at some of these shots. What this means is that no matter what time of day, whether sunny or dark, those unpredictable moments can be captured quickly and with a lot of precision. Another neat perk this camera inherited is the addition of the eye autofocus feature, which essentially locks onto a person's eyes and tracks their movements and autofocuses accordingly. This is great as your subject may move farther away in the frame or closer to the camera and it's nice to know the camera will reliably autofocus and not become blurry throughout the recording process. Despite the amazing photography, my main concern with buying a good quality camera is how well videos would come out and that was ultimately my deciding factor when falling on Nikon's offering or Sony's. The a7 III, much like the a7R III, have a lot in common in terms of videography. They're both frenetic in capturing high quality 4K footage. The 3840 by 2160 pixel video recording across the entire width of the full frame image sensor makes for videos so crisp and so fun to record, especially depending on what lens you have, you can take some very amazing macro shots or take some amazing portraits with a very realistic bokeh effect and that's one thing I noticed about this camera. Modern smartphones claim to have a smart bokeh effect on their portraits too, but this is all managed rather poorly through the software and doesn't seem too real to life. What happens a lot is you take a portrait shot with your iPhone and depending on the lighting, you can see the very clear, sometimes blatant outline of the bokeh manifesting itself within the picture and sometimes ruining it, or it will sometimes just get the bokeh 100% wrong and now your subject just looks silly. Not to mention the a7 III can record full HD at 120 frames per second, which is very impressive so that later you can review your footage and edit it as you please. The a7 III on paper just sounds like a dream come true, especially at that price. It seems you get so much it almost seems too good to be true. This will be up to how well you're able to take advantage of those specs and see how it can actually perform. The a7 III can spit out bursts for a really long time with top speeds, approximately 10 frames per second for up to 9 seconds in compressed raw mode. It also has 693 phase detection points and 420 
for contrast detection. Adding to that, it shoots those full res images at 10 frames per second with extremely accurate autofocus tracking for up to 177 standard JPEGs, 172 fine JPEGs, 163 extra fine JPEGs, 89 compressed raw, and 40 uncompressed raw images. But this is all according to Sony and may be a bit overhyped and is likely lower than what is advertised. Additionally, the a7 III can shoot continuously at up to 8 frames per second in what is called live view mode, and with very little latency and minimal lag both on the LCD screen and even on the viewfinder. But what does that mean if a camera is trash at autofocusing? It's a great sigh of relief knowing Sony's autofocus systems are very intricate and very powerful, albeit a bit confusing at first to understand and get the hang of. All the other modes like extended flexible, zone, and area worked flawlessly for me. Let's get to some of the perks that most modern cameras have that make them extremely handy in today's technological world. For one, the a7 III offers built-in Wi-Fi with NFC to help transfer files to your computer or smartphone, which is very useful. I personally just pop my SD card into the back of my iMac and transfer my files directly into Final Cut Pro so I can begin editing, but I can see the advantages of transferring files through Wi-Fi. Also, a must-have in today's world, Bluetooth is also featured on this camera. Also, a must-have in today's world, Bluetooth is also featured on this camera which can prove useful as well when a Wi-Fi connection point isn't nearby. Another fantastic addition is the dual media slots that support one slot for UHS-2 Type SD memory cards, with the second slot supporting UHS-1 SD or Memory Stick Pro Duo cards. Sadly, only one of these is reserved for those higher transfer speeds, but at least we do have two there. Lastly, battery is huge on a professional camera, and that was a big for me too. You guys may not know it, but finding the right shot sometimes takes grueling sessions of setup, a lot of time getting lighting right, finding adequate time to shoot video in peace without being rushed as well. It's a lot of work, and as a tech reviewer, you want to pump out quality content in a timely manner so you guys are up to date on the newest and freshest tech, and whether you should go buy it or not. And the last thing you want is your battery to die mid shooting sesh. It's never happened to me, but man, I'd imagine that blows real bad. But it's not only for tech reviewers. What if you're getting paid big money to film at a wedding, or you got paid for a private photo shoot? It's at these instances where battery life is detrimental to your work or job. Luckily, the a7 III has your back and will likely not let you down with a tremendous battery life. The camera has a very attractive battery rating at 710 shots per charge, which was increased from the previous model, but that rating is while using the LCD monitor. Luckily, using the EVF doesn't affect it all that much with battery dropping to 610 shots, offering one of the best batteries ever on a mirrorless camera. The a7 III uses Sony's new Z series battery pack which holds about 2.2 times the capacity of the previous W series found in the a7 II. Sadly, a dedicated battery charger is not included in the box, you only get an AC USB adapter which isn't too big of a deal but if you do plan to shoot for weddings or extended periods of time, having a dedicated battery charger and having an extra battery juiced up and ready to roll wouldn't be too bad of an idea. One last thing I want to address is the wide array of lenses available for cameras in general and can be a bit daunting to know what exactly you need for those taking their feet for the first time into the ever evolving world of professional photography. As mentioned, the body alone comes in at $1,999. But you can typically find this camera with several different kinds of kits with a plethora of included lenses and accessories to choose from, but which one is right for you? It's hard to say. Your photography or video style or needs may differ drastically from person to person. I decided on picking up a kit with Sony's 28 to 70 mm f3.5 to 5.6 lens as is one of their standard bundles because this lens is sort of an entry level lens that fits the needs of your general beginner shooter. Make no mistake though, this lens is extremely versatile and makes for a great first lens. I've had plenty of time playing with it and love the manual zoom and autofocus and just the spectrum of shots it can take is amazing. Being 28 to 70 millimeters means it can take some rather up close shots of you and your friends doing some extremely dumb shit extremely well, but also zoom out on the fly and get the entire test subject faster than you can say hold my beer. The lens is of medium size but surprisingly being rather light coming in at only 10 ounces or 295 grams. It's not a huge lens like some of the macro lenses Sony offers but also isn't the smallest either, but the ergonomics work well with the camera. I've never had any issues while working with it or for extended periods of time. Colors are reproduced extremely well, but if you want to get those very vivid and bright colors as well as those more true to life skin tones, I'd recommend adding a filter of your choice to the lens to make those colors pop, especially in lower lit conditions. This kit lens has a minimum focus distance of 11.81 inches or 30 centimeters, so it's perfect for me since I sometimes have to get up close and personal with those majestic tech products that make a lot of us slobber. Oh, just me? 
It does have nine elements and eight groups and includes image stabilization, which is great for a starter lens. I'm telling you, there's not much I have negative to say about this lens. It's great and is pretty inexpensive retailing for $400, but that price is slashed to a fraction of that if you pick it up in a bundle. The autofocus is great, it's light, and it's very versatile. I guess the only bad thing is it's a jack of all trades, meaning it is good at many things but not the best performing in any category, but don't let it fool you. It is hands down the best for those picking up a good camera for the first time, but I must say there are better offerings. Examples include the 50mm f1.8 lens and the Sony 90mm f2.8 G lens, both of which I own and may do separate reviews on later on. Point is, you have telephoto lenses, macro lenses, wide angle, and so many more it's hard to choose so definitely do your research before getting your lens lens that corresponds with your style and workload. The a7 III is remarkable and you won't get a better price for a camera, period. It has some of the best features at a great entry price considering some cameras can start at $10,000 to start and jump even higher with other expensive lenses. Ultimately, I chose a camera that would reproduce amazing video while also having insane battery and being lightweight and portable, a clear advantage of mirrorless cameras. There's little to complain about the a7 III other than some minor nitpicky points. For one, the settings and menus are a bit too much. I wish they were condensed a bit as you'll literally have to sit down for a good 20 minutes just to navigate your way through every screen and every menu there is and can be quite cumbersome to find exactly what you're looking for on the fly if you don't know where to look. While the EVF is great, I know some other cameras have a much better EVF system which look almost as if you are seeing the image in person, but I won't dock at too many points there as those are much more expensive. Also, weather resistance is substandard here as it can take a bit of weather, but definitely run and cover if you get caught in the middle of the storm to preserve your camera and so it doesn't run into any troubles later on down the road. And lastly, Sony, like Apple, is notorious for their proprietary BS. There's a lack of budget native lenses available for the Sony mirrorless cameras. For example, the 90mm Sony lens retails for roughly $1,000, so those coming from other companies will soon find out they made a very expensive switch. This all will, hopefully, pay off as it has been a complete thrill using this camera. All negatives aside, it is the best bang for your buck in the realm of photography. If you can muster up and drop the 2K for it, I'm sure you'll be more than pleased as there are so many great things about this camera the spectacular low light and high ISO capabilities, the ultra fast 10 frames per second shooting, the ergonomics of the camera, some of the best 4K footage I have ever seen on any Sony full frame camera, and the fact that, as compared to the previous a7 II, battery has been drastically improved. Overall, I'm excited to keep working with this camera and probably won't look back at my decision as I am already having so much fun experimenting with different settings and lenses. Honestly, take it from me, a beginner diving headfirst into the realm of photography if you have the money for it pick it up it will not disappoint well guys that's been my review on my first ever real camera i try to encompass a little bit of everything without sounding way too technical as i hope this video aids those beginners just like myself in making a better purchasing decision when deciding which camera is right for you i do plan to review different lenses later on in the future as attaching different lenses almost makes it feel like an entirely different animal each lens is unique and has its pros and cons so be on the lookout for that as always, if you found this video useful, make sure to give this video a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel for all things tech, from cameras, to smartphones, to computers, and everything else in between. Thank you so much for stopping by my channel, and I can't wait to see you all in the next one. Peace out, my dudes.